<laughs> South Wales Blues boys, let's go! <laughs> Never mind. Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back to the Football View Podcast. This is episode four. I'm Fennan. Joining alongside me, as always, I've got Mayhem. It's been a long time. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, um, good. How yeah, are you doing? I'm, I'm over the moon, mate. I'm over the moon. You know how excited I have been to record this episode. About four, four fixtures, to be precise, but about three seasons. Oh, uh, it's been... Been too long, definitely. Been far too long. Yeah, I know. Um, no, I felt under the weather last week, which kind of was a little bit of a blessing in disguise because we had the international break. Don't care about international break. Like, even though that I think Scotland are doing okay at the moment, Wales are doing okay at the moment. They picked up a little bit in form, but doesn't have the same spark as it does when it comes to club football, does it? Especially not when you're watching Steve Clark football. That's the um, thing. It, you know, and in Scotland are doing the, the, probably the best qualification campaign in my lifetime. You played 5-1-5, five, five, um, played very well in in the last game. I think we were, it's just, it's, we're going back now, but I'm pretty sure it was Cyprus. We were away in Cyprus and we were, comp, you know, normally we have a tendency to do it the hard way. We were streaming a lot very quickly. Goals from Scott McTominay and, and John McGinn. Um, and I think Ryan Porteous, um, you know, it was a comfortable evening and we, you know, there was no worries or no drama, which is unlike us. Um, and then obviously we had the, the, the friendly against England. Um, it's kind of bring us back down to earth a bit, you know, 3-1, um, Harry Maguire score an hour only goal, big up, big Maguire. Um, mm. Everyone jump into Big up defense. Steve Clark in his post press conference as well. Would you take Harry Maguire on your team? No chance. <laughs> it's just... Look, I understand when... I think I've said this and... Well, I've said it so many times. I, I can understand when Spain and and for the likes of England, you know, that five at the back and, you know, Tierney playing as the wide centre-back and overlapping Robertson. I, I get it. But, you know, but we're five at the back against fucking Cyprus away. Like, <laughs> yeah, do we? We don't need that. Like, you, all, all you're doing is shoehorning in Kieran Tierney because you've give Robertson the armband. So you, you know you you can't arguably Scotland's best two players or two of the best three, and you, you're shoehorning them in to make sure they're both on the team rather than just saying, "All right, boys, we're going to rotate you because actually coming up we're playing Israel and Cyprus or whoever and." You know, one's going to play one match, one's going to play the other. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's not it's not the most exciting football to watch. Um, we've got Harvey Barnes, which he's thinking about swapping his allegiance. Tell um, you what, yeah, I saw that as well. That is a that's a time real as, coup for Scotland if he does. Same as Elliot Anderson's feigning injury, so he don't have to be called up because he thinks he's good enough for the England squad. The way you fuck me, you're dog shit, fucking. AC Milan running rings around you, mate. It's just some fucking. Did he play oh. against AC Milan? Any Anderson? Oh, right. oh yeah. Jesus! I didn't think he would be in the starting lineup for that game. Christ. I don't think he's. I don't think he started. But he'd definitely come on. Yeah. Um. It's but, a strange one. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, even even at, at the pinnacle when when we're doing really well. Um, I watched the games and obviously you know loved. Love to see him doing well, but yeah, it doesn't have that same, um, that same emotive reaction. Yeah, no, I, I I get what you mean, and you know, like 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 I said, like international break was last week, and was really hoping to go into this episode with a bit more upbeat energy and some positivity, and that really did start for Celtic on the weekend on the Saturday. You came away with a comfortable three 0 win against Dundee. It was fantastic momentum going into the game last night against Feyenoord, but again, like it just, I mean, I don't even know how to even describe it. It felt like it was like a bit of a self-destruction within yeah. eight minutes. So, I, I mean, look, start where you want. You could start from 
the weekend's fixture where everything was so, you know, that, you know, everything worked out to perfection. And then going into the Champions League campaign last night where it seemed to take a, a step back a little bit in a sense. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously we had Dundee on, on Saturday. Um, and I think I, I'd, I'd called it out before when we, when we drew with St. Johnston. Um, that everyone was just getting mad about the performance, and they said, "Look, if Matt O'Reilly takes one of those chances, we probably just dust our hands and say job done." And, and yeah. you know, it, it could have been better at times. That's probably the case of Saturday. You know, um, we were in control for large spells, as we will be for pretty much anyone that comes to, to mm-hmm. Celtic Park in the league, um, and. Puffed and puffed to be a bit. They were organised, you know, difficult, sat in, low block again, as as many teams will when when they come to Celtic Park. Um, at nil nil, Joe Hart makes a big save in in the first half. Um, he, he's come under a lot of stick, and I guess as we move on to the next game, that's kind of been highlighted as to why. Um, and yeah, it just it, it was a bit sort of. Huffy puffy going nowhere, and then early in the second half, um, David Turnbull wins the penalty, picks himself up off the floor, takes the penalty, scores, and then obviously Dundee have to change what they're doing and, and how they're setting up because in order to go and try and affect the game, and um, from there we get a little bit more freedom. Callum McGregor just clips the ball in, Kyogo times his run perfectly, nods it in two 0 and then the game's dead, and um, it's. Pretty simple from there, and Matt, Matt O'Reilly gets his goal, and it's three 0 And Alistair Johnson hits the bar and the post, and we could have had a few more um, after. You know, we, we get that first goal when things relax. What we didn't do against St Johnston, but performance levels were, were pretty much the same. Um, you can tell that, that we're still trying to find our way from playing a very. This is always the problem from going from such a distinct, clear way of playing under someone to when someone else comes in. It's going to be a bit difficult. Yeah, you know, finding it's, those it's patterns. like the sense. Yeah, it's like the sense of being in the shoes of the clubs that come to you when you're in when you're in a league fixture, but then Celtic have to really be. You know, they got to relate to those how those teams feel going into like games in in Europe, for example. You know, for example. Yeah, um, I don't th- see. I think Martin O'Neill summed it up perfectly. I think, you know, the, the big problem was that, you know, Fane or Jess, they were distinctly average and we were undone by considering, you know, defensively we're decimated. Right? We're yeah. playing Lager Bielka and, and we're playing Liam Scales. You probably both wouldn't get a game at this level if we had everybody fully fit. But, you know, nevertheless, it, it is what it is. Um, Hatati just didn't look match fit, didn't look sharp. Um, Maeda, I, I don't know how much longer I can watch that guy. He's an, he's an athlete pretending to be a footballer. But he works hard, though, remember. Uh, <laughs> it, um, and, yeah, but for, for all of that, we were we were matching them. It was an even game. We were in the game. Um, we give away a silly three kick, 30 yards out. You, you don't really think there's any threat on goal. And... You know the ball, Kyogo ducks out of the way, but I don't know. I've never been a goalkeeper, um, but for me, if someone's hitting the ball from thirty yards, even if someone ducks out of your wall as a goalkeeper, you should be able to move your feet and get it. Like it doesn't go in the corner. Joe Joe Hart gets a hand on it. I think I just think he's got to get across and he's got to save it. The guy's hit it from thirty yards. It's identical to when Gareth Bale scored that free kick for Wales against England, where again, like it's not in the corner. It's still within reach of where Joe Hart is positioned and can easily can easily be dealt with. But again, there's a lot of layers to it, like where you know Kyogo ducks, but probably in his mind he feels that there isn't really any threat with it being from thirty yards out. I Look, completely get uh, see, it. See, see, see if you're in the wall, you stand up and get hit in the face. That's, right? it, that's, yeah. that's your job in, in the wall. Yeah. So Kyogo is a is at fault for that. But for me, like, if someone's hit the ball from 30 yards and you've set yourself up to be moving towards that side of the goal because you've given that amount of room so you're predicting that it's going to yeah, go exactly. to that side of yeah. the goal, 
you should just get across from 30 yards. Yeah. He's not hit it with. Fault. They're both at fault. He's not hit it with massive venom. It's it's balanced. It's skidded off the turf a wee bit high, but I think he should get over. But you know, we can see that really poor time. Um, we come out, and again, you know, we're in the game. No one's really having clear cut chances. A lot of scrappy midfield battle. You know, loose passes and people get, getting caught on the ball and, and that. But nothing, nothing massive either way. And then Bugabioka just sees the ball back, um, puts his arm across to to shepherd the ball. His arm's a bit high. It catches the guy on the chest. The guy throws himself to the floor, holding his face and, and the ref falls for it um, and, and gives the penalty. It was never going to be overturned um, because of, you know, the clear and obvious piece. But, I mean, the ref's just been sold an absolute dummy. Um, it's it's never a penalty in a million years. No. Um, and, you know, Joe Hart saves it, but we're down to 10 men. And then, yeah, Holm dives in and you know, catches the guy high, studs showing, and it's a, it's a red card. Um, just mm. real, a real um, naivety to, to the to the performance, a lack of experience at the elite level. And then when you're down to nine men, you know, I think in the end we, we probably do well to get out of there with, you know, with the goal difference not being decimated. Yeah. Um, a couple of offside goals. Uh, there was some, some woman on BT or TNT, whatever you call it now, saying so we were lucky, could have been a few more just like goals. Well, you're, you're not lucky, are you? If someone well, no, because like goal, VAR decides that for yeah, you. And yeah, but, despite there being a number of VAR calls, like they they state whether or not the goal stands. And the truth, the truth in the matter is they didn't stand and the score was 2 0 ultimately. So, but yeah, not, not the way we wanted to start. Um, we've got Lazio next at home, which will be. Turns into a massive game in terms of you know what we're looking to do in the group, yeah. and then you know with the the back to back with Atletico, and then you know, we're we're away to Lazio and we finish at home, the final in December. If we've got a shot going into that final game in December, you know if we've got a shot of Europa League or you know the round of sixteen, if we've got a shot of that, I think we'll be in good stead. They looked, they looked far. I know that. They've been scoring goals for fun in the Eredivisie, and they're obviously Eredivisie champions. Um, but you know, we look more than a match from mm-hmm. last night. And before we capitulate, the problem that we really have is Lago Bielka will now be suspended, and we don't have another recognised centre back that will be fit for Lazio. So um, we're struggling. Stephen Welsh is still going to be out. Cameron Carter Vickers isn't looking like he's going to be about Nat. Uh, Nat Phillips, that was signed as a temporary loan, played 45 minutes in the Dundee game, come off, wasn't available for last night. So, how about the injury there? Don't know. Um, but we're, we're short there, really yeah. short. And Lazio, like I said, is a huge game. So, um, whoever he calls on is going to have to have a... I reckon it looks like Liam Scales will probably continue for a little while longer. And I think he, I think he done all right yesterday. Um, and I say that because in, from a defensive for a defensive term, he he done okay. Um, not not great in his distribution of the ball. Um, not really brave on the ball. They're, they're stepping off, and obviously they're they're setting up to give the centre back space to step into, and he didn't really um, passing back to Hart, putting Hart under pressure. We know that Joe isn't the best distributor of the ball. Um, so yeah, last night was frustrating. Frustrating to watch. Um, frustrating to to see. You know that, like I said, the naivety. You know, obviously Brendan wanted to give the boy home a chance rather than bring on um, Bernardo that, that we signed on loan from Benfica that was at a recognised European club. You know, would have been around that atmosphere before it was completely new to to home. And um, you know, the occasions got ahead of him. He's jumped into a tackle and, and he's killed the game. And um, yeah, like I said, in in the end, you know, I think you just have to take it on the chin. Um, but it's the same old story. So we go away from home in Europe, you know, just capitulation, self harm, and ultimately, it's another loss. Yeah, and it feels like most of the time, the best way to find some momentum and bounce back is within the league fixtures, and so. 
Yeah, you know, you're back in league action this weekend, and away to you know, away to Livingston, which yeah. is a place that we've struggled in the past, and it hasn't been the happiest hunting ground. So it'll be a difficult game there. They'll be bang up for it. Um, but yeah, you know, all, all we can do now is go and um, get that win, and I think we're the early game again. But um, go and get that win, and then open up the gap, put the pressure back on them. And see if they can cope playing second. Um, and then there's another another game in between. And then, like I said, we, we go again for Lazio. So, you know, all big games. But ultimately, I think, I think yourself, obviously, you, you know, you, you're marked on your domestic performances, but also how you carry yourself on, on these nights. And um, I, just, I just think for, to a man, we were, we were disappointing. O'Reilly was all right. Um, Callum for me just doesn't get on the ball enough at the moment to really dictate games. He was he was all right. Kyogo was anonymous. Palmer, I think it's harsh to judge him there, but he, he didn't he didn't look great. And um, first start, obviously, you know, he's away at Feyenoord, not easy, but he didn't look great. Maeda, I'm, I'm just done with him. Um, uh, and and it's harsh because he he does bring a lot to the team, and a lot of people like him, and it's controversial. But I, I just can't stick the guy. All he does is run. He's got no touch. He's got no finish he's got he's just quick he's just quick and he can run like yeah. he can just run he's got a great engine and he's quick and that, apparently that's enough to be a, a football player like it's yeah ridiculous is, is this like due down to going through the transition of adapting to the way rogers wants to play or is it do you feel it's purely based on the ind- the individuals themselves I, i'm not sure to be honest i don't know if you know, May there was a frustration under Ange, but he seemed to get something out of him, you know. Yeah. Um and I don't know what Brenda's asking him to do, but he for all the pace in the world and unless he's running onto the ball, he seems to struggle to beat a man. Um so that the ball has to be kind of like slid into him or clipped over the top for him to be really effective. Like if you if he's facing someone one on one, he sort of struggles to beat the man. Not clinical, you know, he's passing and touch there is so much to be desired. I just I don't understand it. Um, so, you know, if anyone wants to come pay high, you know, there's mental rumours that Tottenham were linked. Not a fucking chance. What's not Tottenham a chance. Linked. That is. There's not. There's not a chance that Ooh. they come in and pay twenty million for this guy. If this guy had a finish or a bit of skill, a first touch. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be playing for Celtic. He would be playing for Barcelona. Like he's that quick, he's that rapid, he's that direct when yeah. he's running onto the ball. But he, he'd be frightening if he had a finish. If he had, he'd be, he wouldn't be playing for Celtic. He'd be, he'd be a sixty, seventy million pound player. But he doesn't, and that's why he's here. Um, so he does have some incredible assets to his game, but just the drop off in the rest is is utterly, utterly brutal. And I guess we got away with it a little bit because we had the flair on the other side of Jota. We've lost that now, and it, you know when. Yeah, I mean you don't have that to kind of cover up. All this guy does is run really fast. It becomes difficult. Well, that's it. You know, we we we've seen it with multiple wingers in the past where they're all speed and no end product, and that's sort of something you know you can't rely on on one attribute. You need to have you have to have the whole package, and if you but, lack that, then but, you're going to get criticised. Fuck that. Let's talk about end product. Ollie fucking. Ah, oh, I love him so much, Joel. I love the man so much. And what a story it's been for him as well. This well, well, man. Before, before we get proper into it, what I did love was there was a proper FM moment when he cut in and scored an absolute worldie, run back to the halfway line, first senior goal. It's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Always, always the case on Football Manager. I mean, oh, I mean, what a story it's been for Oli Tanner. Like to speak about him as an individual. This guy was playing in the seventh tier of the English football pyramid last year. We we bought him for a six figure sum of forty thousand pounds, and didn't obviously was far from ready to make the first team grade Mm -hmm. and 
he made one sub appearance. I think he played may have played in the Carabao Cup where last year we just got knocked out of the first round we were playing in, which was completely familiar with, with Cardiff at the time and you know, this year seems a little bit different. But the only sub appearance I saw him make was in that FA Cup tie against Leeds uh, last season in in the first tie, not the the replay at Ellen Road. And then was loaned out again to to a non league club in New York City. And because it was clearly obvious that he wasn't ready for for championship football by all means and was not surprised in any way, like to make that jump from the seventh tier to the second tier of English football is huge in itself and I can imagine from Oli Tanner as an individual that it was always going to be quite overwhelming for him. It was going to be tough for him to hit the ground running at that point and to be thrown in the deep end against a Premier League side. And so he went out on loan. He came back, looked incredibly sharp in pre-season. And it felt like this was really like the start of his progression as an individual, as a player in his football career and he looked incredibly great in pre-season arguably one of our best players and when we went on pre-season to Portugal where we played the likes of Braga and Porto looked highly impressive and then has had a few tasters off the bench so far this season he came on against QPR looked very sharp um, in a sense made a big transition in the game where we were trailing and made a big impact coming on. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result that we we were looking for. And then came and then came the South South Wales derby on a Saturday which was I mean, the fact that it was a late kickoff for a start was completely bizarre. I think I think it was to do with the the Rugby World Cup. I think obviously Wales were playing in the afternoon. I think that's the only reason why. I think that was yeah. purely the only reason why is because Wales were playing Portugal in the Rugby World Cup. Uh, so no, like like I said, like going into the game, uh, we, I mean, person from my perspective, losing the last four on the bounce, there wasn't a lot of confidence going into it, and rightfully so. But then, like see seeing the lineups and. Seeing how Swansea, have, they haven't been able to really replace um, key names that they have sold over the last over the last season. They're like we've seen Joel Pirro go to Leeds, we've seen Michael Oberfemi go to Burnley, Keith Downs to West Ham, and like just looking at the lineup, like I, I remember just looking at it and going like, we could we could beat this lot today. We could really beat them, and like. There was a sense of optimism in in me, and the game itself, like it was incredibly scrappy for a good seventy minutes. In a lot of in a lot of aspects, like I mean, I felt we were the better side throughout anyway. Regardless, I think Swansea had their best chances in the latter stages of the game, where Jack Hannick makes a big save at the end, where. We're already 2-0 up and the game is, at that point, done and dusted. But I felt we were on top for the majority of the game. Um, Mate has a big chance towards the end of the first half where it's, in a, in a sense, it's a comfortable save. And that was really the main highlight of the first half. And then Oli Tanner comes on. When with his first touch, picks out a ball from the other side of the pitch from Jamie Lou Collins, takes it down with his right foot, cuts in on his left and finishes precisely and sends the stadium in to raptures. And I'm there sitting in the pub with Kean and Stuart screaming the pub down. And you think I had a fucking reason for it? You're damn right I did. And then he goes on and wins a penalty. I know there's a lot of controversy as to whether it was inside or outside the box. Looking back at the replays, 
may I I wouldn't be surprised if it was given outside the box because it's so tight as to whether or not he is on the line of the penalty area. But it goes in our favour. Ramsey steps up. There was no other man that I would have wanted to be over that spot kick and he finishes with pure confidence, pure composure and we come away with a big, a massive result over the Jacks and then we followed it up last night against Coventry and I felt I felt the way we played last night was probably the best we've seen of bullet ball so to speak I felt last night we showed a lot more confidence we showed a lot more drive urgency and just confidence in general like it was it was beautiful to watch and it feels like you know if it's a midweek game we we seem to play with a lot more pressure you know pressure off our backs and the best we can and going against a good commentary side i thought we were excellent each each man to their own everyone was brilliant yeah um yeah, i think that the derby was always going to yeah, those games as much as you want to play well and and perform um uh, it's it's all about the result, especially when you know you've been on the back of a of a few poor results. Um, sometimes you don't get the performance, um, but but you get the result, and, and that's the important thing. I think key players just stepped up more for for Cardiff than than they did for for Swansea. Um, Matt Grimes is obviously a very good footballer. Um, couldn't couldn't complete a pass in the game until probably you know the very end where he clips it through to Josh Kennelly and he air kicks the the yeah. ball. Um, but but Ramsey just he just showed probably why he's still a Premier League player playing in the in the Championship. Just showed a level of composure and, and class on the ball. Used the ball very well, um, especially for obviously when he when he sets you know Tanner away. Um, for the for the attack that leads to the yeah to the pen, um, the composure obviously at the pen, um, to just slide it away with so much pressure on his shoulders. Not only is is he Aaron Ramsey, and the, and he's he's a a championship club. He's he's his boyhood club. He's he's said about you know dreaming of scoring against Swansea. These are all big statements to make, and then yeah, exactly. have, to, have to take that pressure on. Um, so like like I said, the, 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 those games, the, the old cliche always rings true and that's why when people say you know form goes out the window because they are bitty and they are scrappy but i think the, the bigger players um stepped up should have had a few more as well some of the some of the chances that were missed by by the front men carlin grant yeah carlin grant misses a big opportunity when the scores at one nil before the penalty comes and like you know but thankfully he follows that up last night with his first Cardiff goal um, to put us 2-1 up at the time and against a strong commentary side like even without Victor Giocares who we saw make the move over to Portugal in the summer I think it was a, a huge result and it would have felt like a bit of a waste if we were to not follow up on that derby result on, on Saturday and I'm so glad we did yeah, it's always you know, it's always these games that they, they talk about springboard in the season. Yeah. Um and, and that that's give the platform there to, to go and you know, have an impact on the season up to the dizzy heights of ninth. Yeah. Um and, and looking up it doesn't for look once. right looking at the table uh, at the moment. It's weird, like looking up for once in, instead of down. But um yeah, you know, been a been a, a good week domestically for both of us. Euro- European <laughs> Um, is, a, is another story. I'm but... hoping it picks up, though, without a doubt. I really hope it does pick up. And you know, I know in the it, when when it co- always comes to to the league, like Celtic, uh, there's always going to be a lot of confidence surrounding Celtic in terms of retaining the title and overcoming Rangers. And that's you know, in a sense, as long as Celtic maintain consistency, it's it becomes a guarantee. I think we, what we've got to do is, you know, Roger spoke a lot about European football and, and that, and 
the Lazio game becomes huge now. Um, the, that we spoke about, but um, really, for for once, I think you know the the podcast week um, lies in in South Wales, and um, the I'll, way I'll it leave... should be. <laughs> Order has been restored, power has been regained, and it's the way it should be. It should be in the capital. And you know, Mike, Michael Duff's under severe pressure already. Um, yeah, they have and... they they failed to pick up a win so far this season, and so again, it's more it's more salt to rub into the wounds of the Jack. So, but uh, overall, um, great times, you know, times great times, and, and just got to go and build on it again on, on the weekend to make sure that yeah. you know it's not just. Um, a few, a few good results here and there. You know, put put together the build on the confidence, put together. You know, get Ramsey in the team as much as possible. I think you, you'll have to manage him a bit because of his age and, and his yeah. body. But well, he was rested last night, so yeah, get him on the pitch as, good. as much as possible. But exciting times. Exactly, happy days. A good away day next Sunderland away on Saturday, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, no, that's going to be all from us. I'm afraid. Um, but mayhem, good to be back. Thank you for for being here. As always, it's a pleasure to have you. And yeah, mate. Good to be back, pal. Good to be back, mate. And uh, ladies and gents, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, you can find all episodes over on every audio platform you can think of, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Audible. If you'd like to check out the YouTube clips, check you know, check out our YouTube channel over at the Football Booth. And whilst you're over there, drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment. And until next week, ladies and gents, I bid you all good night and a star.